So I know that we, I guess if you look at the way that this is set up, we did this backwards, but I don't think that there's necessarily a correct order in the way to do, to do all this. We could have done genetics first. It really wouldn't have mattered. Um, but we started with body systems. Uh, the body systems projects are due. If you don't have that done, then you have work that you can work on during rhyme and homework and stuff. I'm not going to give any more time in class to work on those. We, you have plenty of time uh, to do those, and you can work on those at home, um, and you need to get those turned in. I'm not going to pester people about those a whole lot. So we finished up with the body systems. We haven't had the test yet because on our test, I'm going to put body systems, unicellular, multicellular, and genetics all into one thing. I don't feel like we're going to spend a lot of time this week on genetics. I remember us doing very well with that. So we're going to continue to talk about this next thing that is related to body systems because we are made of cells. I'm going to talk about this a lot. Unicellular and multicellular organisms. And it all goes back to those prefixes. And for those of us that are staring at our computers and our mouse and, and keys are moving around, you're just playing games. Your best bet is to go ahead and just shut that down and pay attention. If we look at this prefix uni, U and I, who remembers what uni means? Ava. One. So when you have a unicorn, how many horns does it have? One. When you're riding a unicycle, how many wheels does it have? One. One. I mean, that's the kind of things that we're talking about with unicellular. Now, when we look at multicellular, we have that word multi, which means many. You put the two words together, uni. Cellular, that is a one-celled organism. Multicellular is a, cell, a, a many-celled organism. And then we have to just start remembering what we learned about unicellular and multicellular organisms. I do know that any time, Emma, that I see this right here, specialized cells, I'm most definitely talking about a multicellular organism. The first clue is it says cells with an S, that's plural. You can't be a one-celled organism and have more than one cell. Specialized cells are cells, Luke, that have very special jobs. Your respiratory cells, as they start to grow into tissue and the tissue into organs, are going to make things like your lungs to take in oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. It will not have the genetic code embedded in it to make red blood cells that the bones do. It won't have the code in it to break down food like the digestive system. It won't have the code in it to send messages across the body like a nerve cell because that's not its job. Its job, its specialty is to take in oxygen and get rid of, um, get rid of carbon dioxide. And as a multi-celled organism, which would be all of us, we need all of those special cells working together as organs and to make an organ system, which is an organism, which is us. We can't have any of those shut down. It throws things way off when you do. If your nervous system starts to shut down and things aren't doing what they're supposed to do, your body is going to have a very adverse reaction to that. If your cardiac muscles start to shut down, you either get a pacemaker, a new heart, or you may not be around anymore or you might have limited time if your heart is slowly starting to shut down. We need all of those special cells to keep us alive. Unicellular organisms, the single-celled <laughs> organisms, do not have to worry about that. They have one cell and one cell only. Now, Ava, the bad thing about that is I can come up to Trent and thump Trent, and he is fine. Right? Trent will be here tomorrow. Not a problem, because even if I tried to thump him as hard as I can, the worst that could happen is maybe he got a bruise on his arm, but his body is there to repair it. His skin would be repairing itself. His muscles would be repairing themselves. The immune system would be responding to that. Unicellular organisms don't have that luxury. That's why they have such short lives. They're just, they don't have the luxury of being able to like defend itself and repair itself because they only have one cell. And that one cell can only do so much. That one cell can only do so much. Um, so unicellular versus multicellular organisms is very important. Now, 
I don't need you to know, Rayana, all of the facts about an amoeba. I don't need you to know about pseudopods, the things that stretch out and come off of the amoeba, and that's how it moves. I don't need you to remember the flagellum, this tail-like thing, or the cilia that come off of this uh, paramecium, and that's how they move. We're not memorizing that. I do kind of need you to memorize the words amoeba, bacteria, paramecium, euglena, because they're going to use those words and sentences in describing a unicellular organism. They may even have to ask you to recognize out of a list. I think you're going to see that on Rhyme today. It's going to give you a list of organisms. Which one is multicellular? Which one is unicellular? And those are, those are questions that are actually kind of easy. Now, the harder ones are when they start getting a little bit deeper into it. They start talking about specialized cells. How are these two things similar? Those get kind of tough. But a unicellular organism, again, most of them, not all of them, there's exceptions. Most of them are microscopic. What does that mean? What does microscopic mean, Rayana? Really tiny, so tiny that what? I need a microscope to see them. And you can almost see the word microscope in there, right? Microscopic. You can almost see the whole word in there. You need a microscope to see them. That would be my first clue. If I'm up here and I tell you that I've got an organism that's microscopic, you should probably be safe in assuming, all right, this might be a single-celled organism. Now, listen to me. If I tell you it has a transport system, it's not unicellular. It's, it's, it would be multicellular, but a transport system is the same thing as our circulatory system. Does our circulatory system transport, move things around our body? Sure, it moves the oxygen from my lungs around my body. It moves the um, nutrients from my digestive system around my body. It moves the waste from my body back to my lungs so I can breathe out, or it filters it through my kidneys so I can pee later, or... Um, it takes um, like the lactic acid away from your muscles in the bloodstream so that that can be taken away. It's moving things away from the places, but it's always transporting things to where they need to go, right? It's moving things around your body. Unicellular organisms don't have that because they're just one cell. Um, again, they have to carry out everything in life inside of that one cell. Even eating and pooping, which we all probably remember the funny paramecium pooping video that we watched. We'll see it again in a few minutes. Um, like, it does everything inside of one cell, and there are no special cells to help it out. Multicellular organisms. Now, Matthew, that could be this giant bear, or it's really hard to see this tiny little bee around his nose. They are both multicellular. Number one, are they microscopic? No, they are not. I can see them without a microscope. Number two, um, do they are they made up of more than one cell? Yes. Even those annoying little fruit flies, those tiny little gnats in your kitchen in the summertime flying around the bananas. But they're, they're not microscopic. They're made up of more than one cell. And they have specialized cells. Even something as tiny as a cricket has specialized cells. Like grasshoppers have a transport system. Does it look just like mine? Well, no, it doesn't look just like mine. It has a very different transport system, but it needs to move things around its body just like we do. Multicellular organisms are made up of many different cells. Not without a microscope. Are there some examples of unicellular organisms that you can see with a micro, without a microscope? Yes. Most of them. You need a microscope. Algae, you can't see. The reason why you see the algae is because all of them are piled up together. But if it was just one algae, one cell, you would not probably be able to see that. Hello again. Now, the one thing that I remember, I remember seeing these questions about differences. And I did a lot of what are the differences. And I feel like even in here, we did a lot of what are the differences. Well, this one has special cells. This one doesn't. This one is microscopic. This one isn't. This one has many cells. This one has one cell. 
But I don't know that we spend enough time in the past on the similarities between the two. And there are some similarities. Number one, they need food and energy to grow. And they have to take that food in somehow. And anytime, Ismail, that I take in food, I'm going to break that food down. I need to have a way to get rid of the waste. When we drink and when we eat, we have a way of getting rid of the waste. Unicellular organisms are very similar in that. Now, their digestive system, they don't have a system. They break it down inside of the cell and they have to get rid of it from that one cell. So they don't have a digestive system that they're breaking it down. They're breaking down their, their food inside the cell. There's waste left over. They have to get rid of the waste. Otherwise, the waste would pile up and the unicellular organism would explode over time. Like you can't just keep filling things up without them exploding. So again, like we have to, again, have a way of getting rid of waste. And we'll watch those two videos again. We will continue to move on through this as the week goes on. I'll continue to make more uh, videos as we need. Um, we'll stop here. Like, share, subscribe. Click the bell for notifications. All those other fun things.